Hey guys, welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. We are the Mile High Property Brothers. Today, diving right into it, we're gonna talk about the 10 things you must know before moving to Denver in the winter. Now, starting off, setting a little bit of context like we always do, guys. One thing that people are always surprised about when they come to Colorado is really how mild the winters are. See the shaved face? It's not completely right. like clean shaven. It's definitely not as like bearded as it was, right? I was yep. pretty stoic, yep, yep. you know, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Stoic. All jokes aside, yeah, you don't necessarily need all of that. And this is not true. one of our 10, so you, I'll save you the, true, true, I'll true. save you the banter, but it's pretty sunny and about 65 degrees out right now. And it's approximately 420. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. you like that hey, number. Hey. That's life living on a Colorado farm. 420 here in Colorado. And we've got short sleeves on Yes, and no beard needed for the weather. And we are already past our first big snowstorm of the yep. year, which happened right around Halloween, which is typically when it happens. Mm -hmm. So right now we're like mid November, yep. yet we're still in high 50, low 60 degree weather here at 420 leaving. Yeah, it's true. We do have a very, what I would consider a delayed winter here. We're gonna have a big snow typically around October, but then I personally feel like winter doesn't hit hit until mid December, even into January. Those months yeah. do get pretty cold, but that's where you can just consistently depend on it actually being cold here in Colorado. Correct. Now what you can count on and I guess we'll start with one of our first main points yep. is count on having a shovel and having it be uber durable yes or making sure that you have a snow blower if you like because we do get actual real snow here that sometimes can accumulate upwards of a foot and it can be pretty moist when it comes to like how wet it is which means it's very heavy snow yes here in Colorado so when it comes to like shoveling it a lot of times it's just really hard and accomplishing that even if it's just your normal average size driveway mm -hmm. having a snow blower is vital and if you're waiting until midwinter to buy one all of the already new people in Colorado have grabbed those and they're yep. gone. So True. make sure you guys have that prior to midwinter or call Eli or call me. He lives, he lives in Elizabeth. I think he has like a plow truck. <laughs> I, do, four wheeler, four wheeler, I have a yeah. snowblower. I can lend it to you, but That's true. Make, we talk about a mild winter here, but it's heavy enough where you're still going to need really solid winter equipment oh, yeah. to get yourself through. Oh yeah. Now, jump into point number two, embrace the layers. We'll just mention that we're wearing short sleeves. If you're leaving a traditional winter mm. day and you're leaving for work, you're gonna be bundled up in the morning, you're gonna be preheating the car, it's gonna be cold. By the time you're heading out for lunch and doing kind of afternoon errands, you're gonna be kind of hot. And it's yeah. not unusual that it's mid-January and you're still wearing a shirt outside. So that means, guys, if you look in my truck right now, you're gonna see multiple jackets and sweaters and shirts because I'm always layering up and then de-layering throughout the day. And then by the time you're driving back, Back home, it's time to layer back up again because it's getting cold and the sun goes down. It's a little inconsistent per se, right? But like what is consistent is knowing that it's gonna be inconsistent. So yes. you guys can keep a couple layers in your vehicle or just keeping a, you know, a jacket at work or something like that. If you do have to go to work every day for that unexpected, definitely have that. All right, moving into number three, not that these are in any particular order, we're just proving that we can count and that we're smart because we are gonna remind you that yes, we are licensed brokers here in the state of Colorado. And just as much as we love making these videos, we would love more help you to those real estate needs. So that number that's popping up below, we are the guys who answer the phone calls, text messages, and those emails. So if we can help you, we would love to, we can count. That's we're right. smart, we can, we're we here can. for you. But moving into number three, be prepared for drastic change in weather that can just kind of come about pretty abrupt mm. and change your entire night. It's not weird here in Colorado where it can be this degree weather, like in the, in the mid morning and afternoon and you've got high 50s and then come around two, three o'clock, the clouds roll in and by 4.30, not only has the snowstorm hit, but you have very limited to zero visibility on the roads yeah. and it's hitting so quick that it's starting to cover up the roads and it's so wet, but because the evening is coming and it's getting dark, it starts to freeze over really quick. So Colorado, I'm sure other places have this as well, but Colorado is notorious for what we would call black ice. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are at work or if you're at a holiday party or if you're out with friends watching Sunday night football, whatever it is, you really got to pay attention because once you go back into work after lunch or and you're not paying attention to the outside, even though you'll see the snow falling, you might not pay attention to how bad the conditions are getting. And in the matter of two hours, it can be very bad to the point where maybe you don't even want to leave where you're at. So sometimes, and typically bosses are cool with 
it, but really stay on top of weather conditions. And if you've got to leave work an hour or an hour and a half early, it. believe it or not, that might be your only time to actually leave. There's been times where we've seen I-25 South get closed yeah, yeah. between the time of 4 to 5.30. Believe For some it or not. reason, we always get those rush hour storms. Yeah. I don't know what it is with the weather, but we always seem to get those rush hour storms. So definitely watch the weather for that day and be ready. They hit, they're serious, they're unexpected. Mm. Usually the most accidents happen on days mm. like that. So man, just be really aware of that. And if you gotta leave work or wherever you're at early, it's a thing here, make sure you prepare. Now jumping into point number four, snow tires and four wheel drive vehicles are your best friend. Number 4.5 dash one to volume three. <laughs> this dude in a prior video said you could have a two wheel drive Honda Civic in Colorado. <laughs> See that? That's Eli. And literally in a video, I'm sure we could find it if we put enough effort into it. Eli said a two wheel drive Honda Civic would still be okay in Colorado. Don't get it wrong, there are plenty of people here that have Honda Civics, Toyota Camrys, Subarus. Yeah, they're just front wheel drive. There's plenty of people here with those. They get through the winter just fine. If you have a Honda Civic with studded tires <laughs> and you still get stuck, I just call this number because we're here to help you. Just make sure you're asking for Eli that's right, that's and right. what came out of his mouth. I'll call Good to go? AAA for you. Yes. Listen to me. It's not okay in Colorado. Not only is it not okay because you're not getting around on some days, it's not just about getting around. You guys want to get outdoors. You guys want to go explore the mountains yes. and snowboard or ski or just go up and just lodge in cabins. Yes. You want to go out and see like the Parade of Lights during December. Like yes. you want to be able to navigate and not just well, technically, we got more sunny days in Florida, so on all the sunny days, you can drive your two-wheel Honda Civic. It almost caused a breakup. I, I knew this was going to come up. There was no. one thing in our relationship that showed he wasn't a native. Uh, it, was, it was that. Now, was that. if I could expand on my position, it was getting a four-wheel drive is not a prerequisite to moving to Colorado, all right? There are plenty of people here that have two-wheel drive vehicles where, hey, you better get snow tires on those two-wheel drive vehicles. If you have four-wheel drive, you probably don't need special snow tires. If you have a two-wheel drive, you can you can put on snow tires. However, sooner than later, as soon as you possibly can, yes, you should upgrade to something that is all-wheel or four-wheel drive. Any of you out there married? Probably, probably the wives, so maybe I'm the wife in this. Probably you wives sympathize with this, where like, when your spouse just keeps talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just keeps digging that hole. Showing my position, showing my position here. He's the same guy that says things like, I'm sorry you feel that way. No, I'm not. Versus I'm not. just saying I'm sorry, right? <laughs> He's done not with true. his point. The bottom not line true. is all wheel drive, full wheel drive, you guys are gonna be set up for success when it comes yeah. to Colorado. Cause again, it's not just about doing the minimum. You guys wanna be safe drivers, but you wanna go out and explore the winter yeah. and have fun for all the four seasons that Colorado has to offer. In addition to snow, you also just get sleet. You guys get a lot of rain here, you know, depending on the season. You just want to be prepared for that. So all in all, thrive in Colorado. We're just going to fast forward whatever this guy <laughs> was talking go. about. There we go. All right, moving to our next point here. During these cold winter months, take advantage of some of the really fun, warm activities, such as our hot springs that are so prevalent out here. A lot of fun. And yes. not only are the hot springs amazing out here, like Glenwood Springs. Mm -hmm. Idaho Springs, yep. It's gorgeous scenery. So yep. not only can you enjoy those for what they are, but the scenery of what it is are amazing and they're all natural. Yes, yeah, right? yeah. Which is super cool. Yeah, super cool places to go. You can go there with the family. There are definitely more like intimate ones that are geared towards couples and stuff. There's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of them. And the really cool part is it's as you're just starting to get to the mountains. Yep. So you don't have to go too far into the mountains. You don't have to even go to the big ski resorts or anything. It's definitely something you could go do on a weekend. If anything, it, it might, like if you guys have a four day weekend, it'd be great to go ski for a day or two mm -hmm. and then take a day or two in the hot springs to relax on your way back yeah. into town. Yeah, yeah. That's how I'd do it. Now moving to our next point, while you're doing that, one thing you're going to be aware of is that ski traffic is a very real thing. Mm. So that's going to be Friday afternoons and Sunday late afternoons where, hey, if you're trying to go in or out of the mountains, you're going to need to plan for a few extra hours. Pretty sure this is what he meant when it came to like traffic. He's probably talking about real traffic when it comes to getting in and yeah. out of the resource. But something that I want you guys to keep in mind is traffic on the mountain is yes. a real thing as well. There's a lot of safety standards that are up there for the most part, everyone is pretty safe. But first and foremost, if you are new when it comes to skiing and snowboarding, have zero ego, enjoy the kitty hills, learn yeah. how to do it, do some of the smaller hills. Get lessons. But there are definitely some folks that love racing down the hills. There's always gonna be those people, right? And if you're just not ready for those bigger hills, it is not funny to take mm -hmm. your inexperienced ski 
friend to the top of a mountain yep, yep. and hope they make it down. A lot of dangerous things can happen. And depending on the weekend, you do get a lot of high traffic into these ski resorts for, throughout the weekend. So while you're there, man, just be super aware of your ability and just put yourself on the right hill based off of your ability and where you feel comfortable and making sure that doesn't happen. Man, I remember the first time we visited Colorado before I lived here, I was like maybe 13 or something like that, maybe 12. And we went up on the lift and I was like, this is what people are doing. I'm looking like 40 feet down. You have this little bar that yeah. comes in front of you and some guys don't even put it down anyway. And I'm like, I, I can't believe that they just have this is what people are doing all the time. Like, it's real dangerous. Take it precautions, be. It like can you be. said. A couple side notes, a couple other dangers. Are you okay? Oh yeah, I do, I do this all the time. Obviously those are at risk as well, right? Like we gotta cover all the bases. Don't stick your tongue on anything, but guys, it's a lot of fun while you're up there, but yeah. probably the most common injuries we hear from not just folks that are moving here, but even folks that are native, that are friends of ours, that are in the lending world or the real estate world, and they've got like a blown shoulder or they had knee surgery and you ask yeah. them what happened, they blew their ACL snowboarding yeah. or skiing and they a little ahead of themselves and they crash on a mountain. It's like, it's just a little bit more high risk than you might think. Just stay where your feet are, know mm -hmm. what your ability is and just make making sure that you like, you don't wreck yourself. Check yourself That's before right. you wreck yourself, right. right? And don't ask me to go. I've <laughs> yeah, already no checked invites, myself. Please. Will's a little top heavy. We ain't doing that. I will lodge, I'll drink hot cocoa. There we go. Right, there we'll we do go. hot spring. Yeah. And you can tell me all about your skis, but I'm not <laughs> skiing with you. It's a no fly zone for me. Moving on to our next point, but parlaying off of that, sunscreen is a year round thing that you're gonna have here, right? So not only when you're skiing, but even just when you're going to work and going out and about, there is a lot of sun exposure here in Colorado. A ton, it reflects like crazy off yep. of that white snow and you're also at altitude. Yep. In some aspects, you're 14,000 feet high above what, Denver or I guess yeah, above yeah, sea yeah. level, yeah, right? Yeah. Like whatever it may be like. The hard part is you're, it's so cold out, you don't mm -hmm. feel it like your, your skin's a little bit more numb. You don't actually feel the burn that you're getting. So arguably the burn you get in the winter can be significantly worse yeah, than what you get in the summer. And because you got those goggles on, <laughs> You got the best tan line ever. Once you ever. take those off, <laughs> yeah. there is no more embarrassing tan line than you're just your eyes being white. Yep, and the rest yep. of your face being red, right? So it's just, it's not fun to feel, it's not fun to face mm -hmm. once you go back to work or your family members see you, but it's true. either way, we talk about this when it comes to every single video, regardless of season, we talk about the altitude and the differences, but the risk and still making sure that you're protected. So definitely sunscreen. I'm not sure if there's any winter specific sunscreen that just does better in like colder know. weather. Question. Probably something to look up and check, but just make sure that you guys are covered regardless. Now moving on to our next point. This kind of ties in with layers earlier, but I thought it deserved a category of its own. Hoodies are perfectly acceptable anywhere you go during the winter time. Ah, should I wear my North Face jacket or my Patagonia jacket? Decisions. That is a standard, just Colorado get up, just our layers and everything like that. Colorado has a little bit more casual feel a about it anyway, but whether it's summertime or wintertime. When you guys drive into Colorado, if you ever take the highways in or out of Colorado, mm -hmm. like when you're coming in, it says, welcome to colorful Colorado. Colorful Colorado. It should say, welcome to casual Colorado. Because <laughs> like regardless of season and regardless of wealth, or where you're going, there's yeah. never a time where you're not necessarily seeing Birkenstocks or Crocs and definitely a hoodie. And our wealth here, not that that's what it's all about, but even like the wealthier sides of places that you see, it's not necessarily depicted within fashions. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks, especially when the fall and the winter time, are rocking yeah. their North Face hoodie, yeah. you yeah. know, or whatever it may be, but definitely ex acceptable attire mm -hmm. here in, in casual Colorado. Point number nine, I think we're on number nine. We're close enough to number nine. We might have gone a little over. <laughs> with these side notes. Guys, let's have patience on the roads. When it snows, it, like Will said, it can look like there's no accumulation on the road, but there could be black ice. And just, man, allow extra time for braking. Have patience with other people that are going slow in front of you. Yeah. If you need to get around someone, be very careful about it. Just allow so much extra time in the morning. It'll just get a little bit more out of control, maybe a little bit more than you might expect, a little quicker mm -hmm. than you might expect. Even, you know, even when I've come, been coming up north from being in the springs and coming back up to like southeast aurora and mm -hmm. castle rock it'll be dry roads and then it'll go from wet to covered in snow in less than 15 seconds at driving 75 miles an hour on the highway and it's a real butt pucker moment when you go from dry road to wet to covered in snow and you got to navigate like oh i need to slow down but i can't do that mm -hmm. too quick you sometimes have to just coast it out a little bit but, but believe it or not with the altitude changes and depending on like what it looks like on the back side of a mountain but then you come up over that mountain and it's completely different on the other side that's where things 
unexpected happens. That's where people tend to make these knee jerk reactions yeah. and they're just not paying attention to it and they end up having having an accident or, or whatnot. So just be very cautious, be very careful. If you don't oh, yeah. have to go out, you know, like don't press it and then just stay away from just high traffic areas if yeah. possible, yeah. right? Sometimes when it gets really bad on the highways, believe it or not, some of the side roads are better. So if you're coming out of downtown and you got to make it back to Castle Rock or Southeast Aurora, man, some of these side roads are, are taken care of really well. Like our infrastructure yeah. here, as far as like snow removal yeah. in Colorado is phenomenal. And even though they've got a ton of care to the highways, they've also got things allocated for just your normal mm -hmm. roadways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes because you're getting so much traffic there and those plows there, like, and you've got a ton of more trees and houses to block all the snow from hitting a normal roadway in the city, sometimes they're less covered than the highways that tend to be kind of like out away from everything. And there's not as many trees or buildings to break the snow from actually hitting the road. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm making sense yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of times just normal roadways might be a, a better route for you. And speaking to that, our final point, be prepared to get a car wash membership and get your car washed frequently, probably even yeah. more so than in the summertime. It's like 20 bucks a month, 19 bucks a month. Yeah. You can have a great drive through car wash. You can get it cleaned as many times as you want a day, but with all the salt and things that they use to take care of the yeah. roads, like it's nothing major or anything like that, but you just want to keep all the salt and the mag, you know, the mag, the mag uh, chloride yeah. or magnesium off of mm -hmm. your car. It can deteriorate your wheels and your yeah. paint sometimes, but as long as you're getting that mitigated throughout the week, you should be good to go. Yes, and they also say too, with driveways, not to use salt on your driveways because it will cause that pitting. If you guys have seen driveways where it's almost like the very surface level is starting to deteriorate. That's from people that use a lot of salt on it. Or if you're not washing your car consistently and you're getting that mag chloride that's just dripping into your driveway all of the time, that can cause that as well. So just really be on top of it as far as the shoveling and the snow blowing, getting your car washed, just yeah, maintaining. 100%. Be on top of that and also be on top of this number that's popping up below and our reminder telling you that we are licensed right. realtors here in the state of Colorado. And yes, just as much as we love making these videos, we would love more to help you with those real estate needs. Right. So that number that's still below, we are licensed. We are the guys that answer the phone calls, text messages, and those emails. Right. So if we can help you, we would love to. That being said, you saw our little crew member. That was my son yeah, behind us earlier. Right. Cash. That's he's, right. He's, he's managing got, some cameras, managing some audio equipment for us. He's got nice. it. He's got it all figured out. Yeah. So we're, yeah. we're, in, we're in good hands. Which, either way, you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy some of your holiday season. We look forward to helping you guys very soon. See you guys.